Oh boy, guys. If you're watching this video, this is going to be a jive motherfucking gigantic jive fucking gigantic CD pickup video. This the quantity of CDs I really have, but the quality in most of them are very high. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a massive shit ton of CDs to go through and tell stories of, but all right, let's start off by one of my favorite albums I've been listening to over and over and over again this year. And it was released, not, in, this album isn't even a year old yet. This was released in October 2017. And thanks to a Newberry Comics uh, employee at, at my uh, local mall, <laughs> when he saw my Sabaton shirt, he recommended this band to me. Because this band is probably something I might like, because this band... Uh, and this album is primarily based off uh, the history of the Crusades. And uh, Sabaton, as you may know, is all about telling his telling their uh, audience about historical events in their music. They educate me better than any school has ever done. And this album, I originally bought it on digital from iTunes because I wanted to get it as soon as possible. I wanted to... Rock out to this masterpiece, soon to be known as a classic in two decades. But this album is Lionheart. And holy shit, is it fucking awesome. I've been listening to this masterpiece over and over and over again. <laughs> the tracks are, that are my favorites have to be United, Lionheart, Hero, The Two Ballads, Heaven, and uh, My Fantasy. Empire, Stand and Fight, and The Final Crusade. All, 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 this, uh, all those tracks are the kind of music songs that make me feel empowered. I want to take on the world, take on my problems, take on shit that drags me down to reach my goals and finally reach to uh, breaking points that make me happy. Because that's what power metal is always about. Working hard to reach your goals, make your dreams come to life, rather than having them as fantasy fairy tales. I could go on, but there's more to cover. Next, <clears throat> we've got To Hell with the Devil by Striper. I believe I got this at Newberry Comics, and I saw it for $9.99. I was trying to save up, but when I saw Striper in the... Uh, metal section i decided to buy it obviously it's a it's obvious to all you guys that i'm not a christian at fucking all i don't follow any organized religion i do not affiliate with a re religion whatsoever i'm obviously an atheist but i can't help but to love striper's sound i've always loved striper as you guys already knew that from my can atheists listen to christian music video <laughs> and yeah this further proves, this ties into all this, that I went to the extent of buying stripers to hell with the devil. This is an absolute classic. Michael Sweet can really, really rock it out. Oh my goodness. Hollywood Records is what they were signed to. And their uh, ballad, honestly, oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. So fucking beautiful. If you are an atheist and hate that song, you have to be taking your atheism way too far to hate a band like Striper. They are amazing. Next, we've got Avenged Sevenfolds the Stage. Another amazing album. Cap signed to Capitol Records. <laughs> I love that cool shot, background shot of the astronaut in space and the the earth with the moon right in the center of all the uh, stardust or clouds or whatever those what that shit is dark matter whatever <laughs> pretty cool cover and pretty damn great songs too the stage goddamn parad does he exist roman sky higher angels all of it it's great unfortunately i couldn't go 
to see them play some of those songs when I was supposed to see them at Mansfield Xfinity Center because um, Matt Shouse unfortunately has deteriorating vocals so he has to rest for three months before it becomes fresh again. Next we got Blow My Fuse by Kicks. Obviously, Cold Blood and Don't Close Your Eyes, their ballad, is what everyone knows them for, signed to Atlantic Record, Atlantic Recording Corporation. But if you give the rest of the album a chance, it's pretty damn kick-ass. An absolute ass-kicker. And if you, if Cold Blood and Don't Close Your Eyes is all you're listening to, I highly recommend you give the rest of the band a chance while you're at it. Man, these CDs are going to be a ton to update my library with. Next, we've got one of Paul Gilbert's bands, Racer X. Second Heat. Heart of a Lion is uh, by far my favorite song on there. And Hammer Away. <laughs> this album is an absolute killer and classic. Of course, classic doesn't mean good. Neither does modern mean good or bad either. But when... But when an album like Second Heat ages this well, I think calling it a classic is appropriate considering it make, makes you feel nostalgic about how great it is. Even though uh, I never heard this uh, band in my childhood, but, it's, but I still feel like uh, the 80s were 20 years ago as opposed to 30 years ago. And by the way, speaking of which, in two years, the 80s will be 40 years ago. Yikes. Next, we've got Faster Pussycat. Electra Records. Of course, Bathroom Mall's the uh, main song th we all know th this band for based off of Guitar Hero Rocks the 80s, but the rest of the album is pretty damn good too. And also based off the, the Decline of Western Civilization Part 2, the metal years when uh, Bathroom Mall was also featured in that documentary next we got another glam classic enough's enough acto records what they were signed to i uh, haven't listened to too much of enough's enough but once i import them to my library i'm sure i'll be blown the hell away next we got one of my favorite technical death metal bands of all fucking time this was the first album that I was introduced by them, and it's Annihilation of the Wicked by Nile. By far my favorite album of theirs. Holy shit, do they sound evil as hell in many of their songs. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> One of the best things about technical death metal bands these days is that it's, is their sound, and boy do, does Nile sound absolutely fucking evil in this album. It's, it's, if, it's as if the Slayer song Dead Skin Mask was on steroids or something like that, and Dead Skin Mask definitely sounds evil as shit. Oh my god. Stop going in and out. Next we've got one of the funniest uh, albums from one of the funniest movies of all time. <laughs> and I still love this movie and album and band to this day. Tenacious D, The Pick of Destiny. And uh, oh boy, this is going to be an absolute blast to listen to. <laughs> Jack Black. <laughs> You are a blast to watch in movies and to listen to in your music. <laughs> I remember me and my cousin used to be fixated on Be Beazle Boss and uh, Kickapoo. We always used to sing along to that, those songs <laughs> and laugh our heads off of how ridiculous they sound and awesome. Ridiculous and awesome and Master Exploder too. Brings back memories to Rock Band too, might I add. 
Same with the Metal 2, Guitar Hero 3, Legends of Rock. I know I may not, I'm retired from uh, Rock Band and, and Guitar Hero, but I, who says I can't have nostalgia about those games? They are part of what solidified my passion for music, after all. God, I need to take a shower after this video. Next? Ah, oh, shit. Drop the book, sorry. God damn it. Next, we've got Hall of the Mountain King by Sabotage. One of the uh, classic uh, progressive metal bands. White Witch and uh, the self-titled, the, the album titled song Hall of the Mountain King were the songs I was that got me introduced to this band thanks to uh, Lane Chavez. Well, even though I got to White Witch first, but then when I got to Hall of the Mountain King, I was blown the hell away. Holy shit, are the, these guys fucking great. These guys definitely need more than just Hall of the Mountain King put on Ozzy's Boneyard. I love Hall of the Mountain King, but even Hall of the Mountain King itself doesn't even get played all that often on Ozzy's Bone Era. And I'm not just talking about the song. I'm not even. What is. Next, we've got Judas Priest's recent album, Firepower. Epic Records and an absolute killer album. Hopefully, I get to see uh, Judas Priest sometime soon live before. Unfortunately, I won't see the C Saxon open up for uh, Judas Priest like my friend Lane did, but whatever. It's It does suck that I probably won't see uh, Saxon live. Maybe they'll still go on. I'm not sure, but I can dream, can I? I can still dream of kick-ass concerts. Next, we got Disturbs Immortalize. I got a, I was also saving, as well as Disturbs uh, Aslam, as well as uh, Sabaton's Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath, and uh, Black Sabbath. Did I say Sabaton? I hope I didn't say Sabaton. And, Black Sabbath's uh, technical status but since I saw they were only for five ninety nine, I decided to get them cheap. Pretty great deals for uh, great albums like like Asylum, Immortalize, Technical Astacity, and Sabbath Bloody Sabbath. Great albums. But the thing with Immortalize, I've been fixated on the cover of The Sound of Silence on this album, but of course I'm going to give the rest of the al album a listen. <laughs> I've heard of the songs on here, I just don't remember much of it. But I'll have a recall in no time. And holy shit, here comes a big pile. Pig pile number two. And thanks to uh, BlazeLife334, a.k.a. Alex Hoover, for bringing these over to me at uh, Caribbean Beach Resort when he uh, drove to uh, drove to that uh, area to uh, visit me and my family when we were having lunch. And uh, he and I were chatting a lot, a lot of uh, uh, random topics. But uh, one thing I did before I uh, took off back to my hotel is go to his car to pick up some pretty kick-ass CDs for, to boost up my collection and holy shit if I update my iTunes no doubt am I going to be around 8,500 or 9,000 over 9,000 no pun intended by the way <laughs> this is a motherfucking lot <laughs> first we've got two job for a cowboy CDs this is the album where they decided to take their uh, career in a more uh, technical death metal approach, as opposed to their uh, heart, uh, death core uh, roots that they uh, originally came from. Um, I don't remember what their first uh, their first album was called, but I remember uh, what's it called? Uh, the song title called "Am Your" or something. I don't remember, but I, all I remember it was on Rock Band Two. That's all I. 
could. That's all I ever recall. And don't remember when this one was released. Oh yeah, two thousand six. Only six songs on here. Wow. <laughs> I don't know where the the uh, name "Job for a Cowboy" came from, but I always thought uh, that sounded goofy. But I still uh, appreciate their uh, music. Their uh, name doesn't really hurt the, their music for me. Next, we've got Cannibal Corpse. And just like Job for a Cowboy, Metal Blaze Records, Bloodthirsty. And boy, are they gory as hell, as always. 1999. During the, uh, I believe that was the Corpse Grinder era. The Bleeding was the last uh, pre-Corpse Grinder album, I believe. That was released in uh, 1994. Next, we've got one of the more uh, progressive deathcore bands, or progressive death metal bands, Rings of Saturn. <laughs> and progressive deathcore is uh, pretty r rare as fuck these days. <laughs> I know I'm not super keen on deathcore. I used to be very malicious towards uh, deathcore, but I've grown. I've uh, warmed up to some deathcore bands. I am not as exactly as malicious as I once used to, but I don't want to be in this kind of mentality where uh, I have a huge penis because I dislike. <laughs> you, you get the point. You get the point. Just because they are deathcore and metalcore alone, never mind that I haven't even given their music a chance. I am just gonna make try to make my dick bigger. <laughs> I was referencing uh, Ranter and Shade's dr dramatic reading video, by the way. <laughs> you can check that out and skip somewhere near the end if you know what I'm talking about. I believe it was Adidas, the death metal era, that was making that joke up. Next, we've got arguably the best deathcore band ever, Carnifex. And Uprising Records. And damn, is their uh, cover, the cover of that album pretty damn cool. Wait. Oh, Light of My Face is on there. That was the first song I ever heard from them. But I will say, uh, the lyric in that song, I Will Always Love You, I always thought that was strange. Like... Like, really? That's hardcore and brutal, saying I always love you? Uh, but regardless, I still I still loved Carnifex. They're, Carnifex is absolutely great, regardless of uh, uh, that strange uh, lyric to lie to my face. It's just uh, one lyric. It's not going to bring down their entire discography for me. Thanks to uh, the, the video that uh, Ranter and Shades was commenting on called... Uh, how to tell if you're a motor metal poser part two. It was he was saying something about random voiceovers and the part where he goes, What what the fuck? Is uh probably the part where uh, he was referencing the uh voiceover, I think. Because uh Next, we've got another uh, progressive deathcore-like band, and that is Born of Os Osiris. This will be a blast to listen to, just like every other uh, uh, progressive-related uh, content that I've uh, received from my good friend uh, Alex Blaze Life Three Three Four, aka Alex Hoover. Unfortunately, uh, the bottom of this is broken off, but I'll, it'll survive. Next, we've got... I have no idea what this is. Oh, yeah, another Carnifex album. It just didn't have its uh, band logo on it. But damn, is this creepy as shit. <laughs> the cover of this album is damn creepy. <laughs> Next, we've got... New American Gospel by Lamb of God, Icarus Music. <laughs> Saw them the other day. 
opening up for Slayer. <laughs> and, and holy shit, where they kick ass. Fortunately, I can't seem to figure out what the songs are on here. Sorry, right, guys, bear with me. Hang on. Just bear with me. I gotta. Next, we've got another uh, Lamb of God album. As the palaces burn. Right here. Hey, Ruin's on. Hey, Ruin. <laughs> this will be it. Next, we've got Carnifex Die Without Hope. With another pretty damn cool uh, <laughs> cover. Signed to a nuclear blast. Hey, that's where a lot of the power metal bands were signed to. I had no idea that Carnifex would ever be linked to a nuclear blast through records. That's where a lot of thrash metal is signed to as well. But regardless, this will be a damn good album to listen to. <laughs> if I'm ever in the deathcore mood, at least, or any uh, extreme metal mood. Because currently I've been fixated on power metal lately. Next we've got another Carnifex album. The Diseased and the Poised. Carnif What's with Carnifex and intimidating cover albums <laughs> next we've got finally one of my uh, first uh, black metal albums I'm not sure if I ever had any uh, black metal albums prior to this one but behemoth behemoth mm. They always had a thing for uh, being shock and uh, Kiss-alike appearances, but even though Kiss was not the first band to ever have that kind of black and white face painting, it's uh, some band, some other band did it by uh, 1968, I believe. Next, we've got the Black Dahlia Murder. Deliberate. Signed to uh, Metal Blade Records. A lot of people confuse this band as um, Deathcore when they're actually in reality, at least in my opinion, Melodic Metalcore. Melodic Metalcore, fuck me. Melodic Death Metal, my, my bad, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just because they look Deathcore doesn't mean they are Deathcore. Looks do not become before music. Next, we've got... Oh, shit. What's the sound like? It doesn't even say the songs on here, unless if this was a cover of some other album that I missed. I'm sure Blades Life 334 will correct me on this once he gets to this. All I know is that Baroness Purple. Does it ring a doorbell? But I'm sure this will be a pretty decent album to listen to. Oh, yeah. There's, speaking of which, there's another one.
run in this. I'm pretty sure this will be a decent album to listen to as well. Not sure if it rings a doorbell at all, but I'm pretty sure it will be great. <laughs> Fuckers. Next, we've got another Black Dahlia murder uh, album. Ritual. Signed to Metal Blade Records, of course. And finally, another, uh, another uh, melodic death metal band. Monomoth versus the world. So far I've only have uh, two Amonomarth albums, that being Yom's Viking or Joms Viking, however it's pronounced, and Deceiver of the Gods. One from 2013 and the other's from 2016. This one here is from 2002. Wait, was this the same album they covered Balls to the Wall? Hmm. Nope. I don't see it on here. Next we got another uh, Jump for a Cowboy album. Sun Eater. Jump for a Cowboy has always had a mind-blowing drumming on their albums. <laughs> What's with progressive metal-related albums and their drumming? <laughs> then again, we do have Mike Portnoy from Dream Theater. Unfortunately, he's no longer a part of that band, but he is arguably the best uh, drummer in metal, but the best uh, drummer of all time outside of metal, in my opinion, is Neil Peart. You cannot like uh, Rush if you want, but you gotta admit, he, Neil Peart is arguably one of the best drummers ever if not the best drummer ever. After all, Rush is progressive rock. Next, we got another Job for a Cowboy album. Demon Demonocracy. Demonocracy, I think that's how you pronounce it. Icarus Music Records, of course. It also says Metal Blade on here. With a cover album that looks almost similar to And Justice For All, <laughs> too. Referencing Lady Justice. <laughs> so I'll give him that. <laughs> Next is another Baranis album. Baranis, uh, I'm a, I kind of feel stupid for thinking that they don't ring a doorbell, but I'm sure that I'm, I'll like them anyway. Reliefs Records. And then we've got uh, Trivium's, one of their more uh, recent uh, albums in the 2010s. I think this was released in 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Signed to uh, Roadrunner Records. I'm not sure. I don't remember what this album's called, though, but it is. But I did, oh, yeah, Vengeance Falls, because I remember having one of their songs on here. Strife, I think, is the song I have from this album. Where uh, they decided to go more progressive with their music. Because uh, Trivium uh, always incorporates a lot of different subgenres into their uh, albums. Every solitary album, there's always some differing style from the last album. First, their metalcore, then their a bit of melodic thrash metal, then their progressive metal then they're you get the point next we've got two of the sword albums one of them happens to be the, the album that has the same song that was featured in Guitar Hero 2 Freya Wait, is the Black River on this one no it's not but regardless, The Sword is a pretty damn good band. I'm not like a super crazy fanboy of them. Maybe I will be eventually in the future, but they are still amazing. They still write amazing music. Pretty doomy, if you ask me. <laughs> Just like Black Sabbath. 
Next, we've got a ton of As I Lay Dying albums right here. Shadows of Security was the only uh, album I have had of theirs prior to this, but now I've got Dekaz, or Dekaz, however you pronounce it, Awakened, Frail Words Collapse, and The Power is the Rise. Next, we've got... Oh, wait, there's another As I Lay Dying album. I think I probably have their entire discography by now. <laughs> An Ocean Between Us, As I Lay Dying. And uh, I think this is another As I Lay Dying album, if I'm not mistaken. Because this album cover does look familiar. But I'm not sure if it's As I Lay Dying. Is it? Sorry, I'm having a piss poor memory here. I'm sure Blaze Life 334 will correct me if I'm wrong in the status. In the uh, comments, my bad. <laughs> because this album definitely does look familiar. Oh, yeah, the sword. Gods of the Earth, the sword. I knew this album looked familiar for a reason. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Black River. That was featured in uh, Guitar Hero Metallica, if I'm not mistaken. Next, we've got two Born of Osiris albums. Tomorrow We Die Alive. And Soul Sphere. Both signed to Sumerian Records. Boy, are these CDs going to be a huge hassle to update it all through and then. I think I went through all of them. Let's see how many CDs I received. Thirty-one CDs received from Blaze Life three three four. Wow, that's a shit ton. Wow, thirty-one CDs. But now let's count the rest of the CDs I bought on my own altogether. I have three more CDs coming. Two of them happen to be uh, Hammerfall, I believe, and the other happens to be uh, Celador. And I don't know what the other album is called, but. Uh, I'm sure it's power metal since I've been fixated on power metal lately. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 50, 50 uh, 30, why did I say 50? 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46 CDs! <laughs> That's a huge shit ton. However, I am not going to import this CD because I already have the uh, digital... The uh, digital um, download version of this album, so uh, this will be left to my to listening to in my car, or maybe just maybe if I feel really generous to someone who absolutely loves 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 Serenity Lionheart, I'll probably give it to them, maybe, but I'm not sure if there's any other friend of mine that loves. Serenity or cares for serenity, which is going to be the problem. So I picked this up because it was just rare as hell to see serenity in, at my local Newberry Comics. Hell, to even see serenity at all at Newberry Comics. Like, you guys have no idea how fucking rare it is to see those guys have sold merchandise at my local Newberry Comics. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this really, really, really long update. <laughs> but it's all worth it, and I'm sure Blaze Life 334 is flattered over the fact that he 
played a major role in this video based on the amount of CDs I got from him when I was in Disney World and when he hauled his ass over to a Caribbean Beach Resort just to drop them off for me. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep it metal and peace out.